Good morning, good morning, good morning. Just setting up, getting everything ready. How is everyone today? Oh, it's actually raining here. It's there is no sunshine. I should have said a dose of rain. <laughs> hey Raya, how are you going? Um, it is it's actually been a little bit cold and wet and drizzly. It's rained all night last night and it's one of those days you just want to lay in bed and, and watch movies, right? <laughs> um, so let me just start our presentation. Today we're talking about creating our reality. Um, we'd love to see um, a morning from the people on um, our our webinar, I can see that there's a few people on. So I would love for you to say hello and um, where you're watching from, that would be fantastic. So let's get started. Today we're talking about creating your reality. Um, now we all do it, right? Um, we all create our reality, whether we're conscious of it or not conscious of it. Good morning, Christine. So, before I start, as I always do, I should put this on recording. <laughs> I hope for those that uh, may be watching that I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Elizabeth Eleanor, and um, I have been aware of creating my reality for, oh, geez, I would say 18, 19, 20 years, as long as I've been a remedial massage therapist and um, discovered energy healing and um, how energy worked, you know, like started playing with that process. And it's been a big journey since then. Lots of learning, lots of understanding. I got right into, um, in my younger years, I got right into Greg Braden before anyone even knew, at, not, not, I'm sure that other people knew of him in Australia, but um, none of his books were being sold in Australia. Um, the first book of his that I read was um, Awakening to Zero Point. Very, very interesting book. I'm not even sure if it's, if it's printing anymore. Um, so uh, Greg Braden was a great one that I used to listen to. Bruce Lipton is another one that I used to listen to. So it started with the, as my brother likes to call them, pseudoscientists, the people that um, were scientifically based and um, you know, looked at epigenetics and quantum physics and all of those things, and then slowly became uh, more spiritual based because they discovered spirituality through the sciences. How are this, you know, how amazing is that, right? And so um, I did uh, looked into um, string theory and um, all sorts of stuff. Uh, was my brain was absorbing all sorts of stuff when I was younger. And so now, as I've become a little bit older and wiser, um, I look at a lot of the stuff coming on now and I'm like, yeah, I, I remember that from 20 years ago. Uh, and it's a good rem reminder of where my head was back then. Um, and also it's great to re-look at what's going on now, where these people are now and... Um, you know, another one is Dr. Joe Dispenza, which everyone was talking about and I never really got into because um, for me, it was just like, yeah, that's stuff I addressed already. And um, only uh, at the start of COVID did I go and dabble in looking at his stuff and some of his meditations and stuff. And he's got, um, you know, a beautiful understanding as well. Uh, all, all of it's based around the same stuff, right? We create our own reality. And whether you're aware of it or not, um, uh, that's the thing. Whether you're creating from old patterns or whether you're moving into creating your reality from the conscious now. So let's start talking about that. So your world is given, giving you feedback. Your world is giving you feedback. So what you're living today is from the thoughts that you have had in the past. So whatever your reality looks like now, it's because of conditions and thought patterns and feelings and actions that you've taken in the previous 
um, experiences of your life and your past experience. So look around you now, everything that you've got from your relationships, from your um, bank account, from your um, environment, the house you live in, all of those things are from previous experiences that you've had and you've made a decision from the feelings and the thoughts and based um, a conclusion from there and moved into an action. And that's what's going on for you right now, which is a great thought because that means that as you get, um, you're moving into your future, that whatever your thoughts are now is what will be your future experience, right? Because we all live on a, you know, um, time-space reality on third dimension. Um, so your mind is predictive. Your mind is basing this information from previous experiences and programming that you've had before. So what our program um, has given us is what we will focus our attention on or our attention focuses on rather than what we um, what we initially so for example this is a great um a great example is you get a new car you've never seen this car before and all of a sudden you're seeing it all over the place people have got got cars like that all over the place and you didn't even realize because you weren't focusing on that um so we learn how to decide how we feel right now by looking at our external world we were actually conditioned to look at our external world as to what the feedback what our conditions are internally by looking at our external world and we'll get into that a little bit further so our emotions are subconscious we actually have um, four billion bits of information coming in per second uh, and we can only be consciously aware of about 2,000 of them. And what's happening is all that information is coming through and it's locked in from our perceptions when we first experience that. And so um, this can be, uh, so, so if you were, I gave the example um, I just did a half day workshop on the weekend. Thank you to everyone that um, attended. And I was explaining an experience I'd had where uh, I was delving into what was going on with my neck. I've had a bit of an issue with my neck. It's been going on way too long. And I have actually, to tell you the honest truth, been quite lazy with looking at it from, from the way I usually work on it because I've been working too hard, working, um, supporting my mum, all of these things. And so I haven't given enough time to myself, which anyway, that's the way it is. And so I looked into it the other day and something that came up for, uh, was uh, feeling abandoned. And so when I go into that process, the first memory of feeling abandoned, and this was like, you just sort of go with what happens is, uh, being three years old in a cot in the house and no, I was in a room by myself and no one was around. So I felt like I was being abandoned and all I could hear was yelling <clears throat> and, and stuff going on outside the house. Now, from looking at it from a, a different level, I actually saw that my mum was just cooking dinner. The boys were being, I've got two brothers. My, my brothers were mucking up and she was yelling at them. It was just a normal freaking day. And yet as a three-year-old, I felt abandoned because um, when I looked into it, I actually just wanted to know what was going on. I was being curious. I was, um, uh, I wanted to get in the action and be part of what was going on, right? So it was just a normal day. And from that, locked into my brain that I was abandoned. And so being able to access that memory I was able to clear that process and clear that abandonment and, and start shifting things in my head. Another thing that came up for me was feeling helpless. This, this thing with my neck has made me feel helpless because I haven't given enough time to it and it's been going on for too long and it's very, very unusual. It's not something that I've heard anyone else have 
Um, I've had all sorts of treatments uh, to support myself to release it and it has not released. And so um, I was feeling helpless. And when I looked into that, uh, I was five years old and that's when I think my whole family must have realized that my dad was sick. And when I looked into that process and, and understood it from a higher perspective, I realized I was actually taking on, I was empathic back then as a five-year-old um, which I had no idea. And I was tuning into my mum feeling helpless because her husband all of a sudden was sick and she had to be the breadwinner in the family. And so here I was as a five-year-old watching everyone, um, con everyone's confusion and helplessness and not being able to do anything about it. And so I took that on. And so bringing that into the now, I was able to go, oh, I'm taking on someone else's experience. I'm taking on other people's feelings uh, energetically. And so I was able to release that as well. And I could feel it releasing all the way down my, my back. And so then you go a little bit further because we've actually discovered through epigenetics that we can be holding on to emotions locked into our system from nine generations back who would have believed it was actually in the bible and now epigenetics are actually starting to discover that we've got nine generations of information that could be blocking our energetic field and moving us towards what we choose to have what we choose to experience and so we're in this loop we're in this lockdown um, experience we've got these uh, synapses that have melded together and created a pathway in our brain and so is it having to be conscious to be able to break those pathways so how do you do that right bringing awareness to the feelings that are happening in your body so you've got a feeling and emotion coming up how do I feel in my body about this? Where is it in my body? Find the first experience or the first memory that comes in of that experience. What do I remember? When do I remember having this feeling prior? And see what comes up and, and um, never doubt what happens, what comes up. My brain at first said, you don't remember being a three-year-old because I don't. I had to bypass that mind and just go with whatever visions were coming up for me and, and the feelings with, that went with the vision. So be aware of the perception you experienced. So here I was in a cot thinking I was being abandoned and actually mum was just trying to make dinner. It was just a normal day, right? So you, when you change your perception, you can change that program instantaneously. And that will change the reality now and in the future. It actually changes that whole timeline within your system so that that pathway has shifted in your brain. And so there is no, for me, helpless, um, abandoned energy in my system anymore because I've looked at it and I've processed it. I actually physically had an experience of it on the weekend when I um, did the did my half day. There was something um, not right. I needed to tweak in my PowerPoint before I got on. And I know that prior I would have gone, oh my gosh, I've got to get my assistant to do that before we get on because um, I don't know how. And I'd go into helplessness without even consciously being aware of it. I just think, oh, I'm just going to get my assistant to do it. However, as I saw it, the pathways were different without even being aware how, like, you know, it just happened. And I went, oh, I'll be able to work out how to do this. And I did it by myself. And I was very proud. And that's when I realized that that helplessness uh, had shifted in my system. So when you change and you become mindful, so meditation is a great way to become mindful. 
being aware of what's happening in your body now. Am I responding or am I reacting to something? So shift the now to create a higher frequency future. Sounds easy, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a constant process um, of shifting previous locked in emotions that have lower vibrations. So if you've got lower vibrational feelings in your body, uh, then it's, con it's constant. Don't think that anyone doesn't have them. They just... This morning, I seriously wanted to lay in bed and watch a movie because outside is a bit miserable. And, um, and you know, like that's the first thing that you, when you wake up, your emotions are from what has gone on while you've been sleeping and all of that sort of stuff. And so, um, I, you know, one of the things I put in the slides here is emotional priming. We wake up and we do a routine. Most people have got some sort of routine, whether they're conscious of it or unconscious of it. Um, wake up. I wake up every morning. I do lemon water first thing in the morning. I then take a nutritional drink um, of superfoods that I take. Uh, and then I have my breakfast. At the same time, I'm getting ready for the day and doing things around the house. And then I have my shower. I have a cold shower at the end of the shower. But these are things, and after a while, it's like driving. You, you do it without even thinking about it. However, we often forget to create a routine for our emotions. So we wake up in whatever emotional state we're in and think that that's the emotional state we're in instead of being aware that we can actually change that. So our mind responds to our feelings and has no idea whether they're real or imagination. We actually have the power to change how we feel because our mind doesn't know the difference between reality and imagination. So whatever we choose, the mind will believe. And unfortunately, most of us are um, watching TV, the news, social media, if you've got um, people in your life that are in fear and doubt and worry and concern, which is 90% of the population being totally governed by various things that they see outside of themselves, the stimuli that's being given to them and their, um, their input is external. And so that slowly infiltrates your, or sometimes not even slowly, uh, infiltrates your energy field, becomes part of what you then decide is your emotions and how you feel. And then you think, oh, I'm an anxious person. I'm a person that uh, worries a lot. And you label yourself as that instead of, I'm actually feeling anxious at the moment and I'm going to do something about it. So we actually have control of how we feel. No one outside of ourselves can make us feel a certain way. That's a big one, right? I'd love to hear from people here if you are aware that you are consciously creating your own emotions and your own responses to what's happening to you outside. I had a great experience a couple of weeks ago where <clears throat> my brother and I got into a um, heated discussion, I would say. Um, well, he got into a heated discussion and Years ago, the way I would have reacted, I would have gone into fear and I would have shrunk back because I, I was brought up in a um, very aggressive, loud, abusive family. And so I would have shrunk and freaked out and not said anything. 
um, I wouldn't have, I would have shut my mouth and, and um, not given my opinion. And yet the same response, the same, he, he created the same thing. He was reacting the same way to the conversation we were having. And my response was a response, not a reaction. I stood, I, without even being aware of it, it wasn't something I consciously did. It's from my shifting my vibration and being uh, a different person to when I was then. And I just looked at him. I realized that my energy field was still strong. I realized that my um, perception of what he was saying was very different. Um, I felt um, that it was pointless to give my decision, you know, to give my um, comments because the conscious level that he was on was not going to actually be able to understand where I was coming from or even if he didn't wasn't open to it so um, you can you know have a conversation with someone that's not um, consciously aware of what you're talking about however they're still open to it right and so um, I was really aware that I held myself in a very different way and it, uh, I then later on when we left, there was no holding on to it. There was no um, residue in my energy field from the experience. And so very, very different to the last time. So stimuli on the outside was still the same. My response to it was very different because of all the work that I've done to um, shift perceptions and patterns and neuro um, you know synapses in my brain that that fired a certain way is now firing in a very different way and so you can go through the process uh, of you know meditation is a great uh, way to bring some reality some some mindfulness to your space uh, it helps you to lower your wave frequency so you can access your subconscious patterns in a different way. Um, or you can work with someone um, to, like, meditation is a great one. If you're a meditator, the deeper you go, the more you can access this and release some of these patterns, right? You become calmer in yourself. You respond rather than react. It's a very, very different way of um, being. Um, one of the things that I do in my processes with people is what I call multidimensional healing, where we actually go in or you go in and I facilitate the process for you. Uh, you go in and you access patterns. The difference with the way we do it is, is uh very, very rarely does it come up as a memory from this life. And so it can be a pattern within your brain frequency or brain, uh, you know, synapses are tied into a pattern. And because, as I said before, your mind has no conscious understanding of whether it's one way or another, the reality of something compared to imagination you see it in a vision and sometimes you can experience it as a past life and sometimes it can be just this crazy imagination process that you go through. However, the, the results are the same. It's shifting that um, stuck frequency and moving it so that those synapses and those patterns change in your system so that you're therefore um, being able to break that pattern and shift that vibration, similar to what I did uh, the other day where I looked at physical things that were happening to me in this reality, I could um, have gone in and looked at, at it in a deeper and a different way through the process of um, multidimensional healing. So if, this is, if you're new to this um, webinar and you are not on the Spiritual Warrior, which is my business page. This is a QR code. Everyone seems to know how to use these these days because of going um, to cafes and 
wherever you go, there seems to be one of these codes that you've got to check in. Uh, if you would like to get in contact and find out a little bit more about multidimensional healing, or even just about breaking patterns and um, shifting your vibration and being consciously aware of creating your reality from now, like being aware of um, releasing those patterns so that you are consciously creating your reality instead of unconsciously from old programs. Uh, you can put yes, please, in the comments here on the both on the um, webinar as well as on the Facebook Live. And I've got a few 30-minute chats left. So um, I love the feeling of waking up cool, relaxed after early. Do you think you, that you experienced abandonment in a previous life, Liz? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Christine, I think uh, all of us have had some form of abandonment. Uh, I feel personally that abandonment comes from um, way back when, like if you go back to the, the very start of uh, our consciousness and our consciousness is a big hole, right? When we separated from all that is and became like, um, you know, you can say it's the big bang depending on your language and where you come from. Um, you know, when we, the big bang happened or, you know, um, we were taken out of the Garden of Eden or we were um, in the knowing and wanted to experience. So there was this separation into big um, hot and cold and black and white. There was a duality created in that moment. And all of us would have a conscious understanding, un, a subconscious understanding of this because we are all one that moment that that happened there would have been a feeling of disconnection abandonment um you know like separation all of those things are um innately in us and we are in the process of reconnecting that's um, one of the reasons i talk about the three powers and and the power to be empowered and connected to your higher self so that you can bring that connection back, that um, mingling of the higher source energy with our body and our physical um, energy field here now, right? So if this uh, sounds like something you'd like to know a little bit more about or would like to personalise it and understand a bit more about what's going on for you, please just put yes, please in the chat and we'll be able to send you a link so that you can have a 30 minute free chat with me. Um, we can discuss anything that's going on for you, where you are now, where you'd like to be and see if we can come up with a game plan in between. Um, and for those that are interested, I have my meetup on, on the 29th, which is this week at 6.30 and it's um, beautiful Carmel Murphy is on uh, with me and she will be discovering, she will talk, be talking about discovering the three things your faith is telling you. And I'm going to be sending out an email today for all the people that have registered uh, on Meetup and Zoom. You'll get an email and whoever emails me back from that email has the opportunity to have their face read so that, um, they, that Carmel can... Um, give you an idea of what's going on for you so um, she asked if I wanted my face read I've already had my face read by Carmel it's amazing and so I thought well let's give it to the opportunity to someone that's attending the actual workshop so if you're attending or looking to attend just throw in meetup in here um, in the chat and we can send you the link you um, then register on meetup as well as on zoom and you'll get the email today and uh, the opportunity to have your face read. <laughs> okay, take care, everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. And um, we will catch up with you soon. See ya. Thank you, everyone, on the webinar. I'm just looking at... Um, thank you. Yes, please, to Carmel. Awesome. I'll send you the link, um, Christine. Lizzie, oh, awesome. Hi, Lizzie, how are you going? Cool, so Lizzie, let me just put that down. Lizzie, Christine.
and Judy. Um, awesome. I will send you the link to all to the meetup. So you just go in, you click on the meetup and register, and then on the Zoom link, which is on the right hand side. Oh, awesome. That's fantastic, Lizzie. <laughs> Isn't it divine timing? You just finished um, your morning um, work, I'd say. Okay, ladies, take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and um, week. And we will catch up with you soon. Let me just stop this. Take care.